<sighs> oh my, that was an exciting one. Let me try that one again. After clearing my throat. And now you know what my mute button is. <laughs> <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome back to Operation Logistics where we are currently working on generating our deliveries which is actually a pretty important thing. We just got our priority set up here so we're going to go ahead and do another roll here so roll equals random dot range we're going to roll between 1 and 101 again so just a new random roll and this is going to be setting up our delivery types. So we're going to need actually another variable here. But first, let's just set up a comment here for determining our delivery type. Okay. So we're going to need another balance variable here. Well, another group of them. Pretty large group of them as well, because we're going to need minimums and maximums here. Yes, indeed. Well, let's go ahead and do public float. And this is going to be... Yeah, this is going to be a lot of variables. So public float... Parcels. We'll do parcels first. So public float parcel volume min equals... And what's the minimum volume of a parcel? Well, that would basically be an envelope... And we can figure that in cubic meters as being not much. We'll just call it 0 0.1 for right now. We'll say that that's the minimum. And then public float parcel volume max would be somewhere around... a quarter of a cubic meter. Something like that. And then we'll do public float parcel weight min again 0 0.1 is the minimum and then public float parcel weight max would then be something along the lines of i don't know half a kilo something like that that'll be fine for now we can always adjust these later that's not a big deal so then we need public float and the next one is package volume min and that's going to be just the next tier up, essentially. And then public float package volume max equals 0.5f for now. We can always adjust this later. Public float package weight min equals half a kilo or so. And then public float package weight max equals right at around a kilo. Okay, so our next one is our crate, which is basically just going to step this up again. We could hard code this and have these values just be calculated, but I want to be able to have tuning knobs to adjust each one of them. So we're not going to be doing that. Public float crate volume min equals about half a cubic meter. Public float crate volume max equals honestly about a cubic meter that should be fine and then public float crate weight min and actually one kilo as the max weight here i don't know about that let's have that be three kilos i mean that's still a relatively light package but that'll be fine so the weight minimum for a crate would be then three, and the public float crate weight max would be probably a lot more than that, around 15 kilos, we'll say. I mean, even that, you know, if you're like shipping a refrigerator or something, but I don't know, maybe we'll just multiply by 10 here. So we'd have this be like, so the parcel weight minimum, 0 0.1. Parcel weight max would then be 1. And then the package weight minimum would be 1. And then the weight maximum would be 10 kilos. And then the crate weight minimum would be 10. And then the crate weight maximum would be 100 kilos. The crate volume 
is probably more than that. So let's do the same thing here, actually. The volume max would then be a cubic meter. And then here it would be the volume min would be one and the volume max would be 10 cubic meters. That doesn't seem right. Um, let's have this start at point one and then we'll just have this double every time, maybe. 0 0.2. I don't think it's going to go up fast enough. Multiply it by five. So 0 0.5 and then 0 0.5 for 2.5 cubic meters. And then 2.5 minimum. Hang on. I'm changing the weights here. Okay. Okay, so that should be 100, and then the volume would be 1, and then times 5, so 0.5. So this would be 0.5, and then times 5, so 2.5. And then this would be a minimum volume of 2.5, and a maximum volume of 2.5 times 5 would be 12.5. Okay, and then finally, public float shipping container volume min would be... 12.5 times 5, which would be 60 plus 2.5, so 62.5. Actually, that would be the max. 12.5F, public float shipping container, volume max would then be the 62.5. And then public float, oops, public float shipping container, Weight min would be 100 kilos, and public float shipping container weight max, based on our scaling, would be 1,000 kilos. And I think that scales pretty nicely, honestly. I don't hate that. I think that's fine. That is a lot of variables. We have a a lot of tuning knobs there. We can always shift things up and down if we find that it's not really working very well. But we can now deliver our or determine our delivery type. So if roll is less than shipping container chance from business, so business dot shipping container chance, then in that case we know that this is a shipping container, and we can go ahead and say type equals delivery type dot shipping container and we can also at this time go ahead and determine our volume and weight but i just realized we don't have our max hours and hours to deliver here we should have that here so priority max hours to deliver equals 24 and hours to deliver also equals 24 and then for standard, it's four days, so that would be 48 times 2 is 96. So max hours to deliver equals 96. Hours to deliver equals 96. Okay, for economy, we have a week. So let me... actually, we already have a calculator open. 24 times 7. 168 is the answer. So max hours to deliver here would then be 168, and hours to deliver would be 168. Excellent. And then here, for bulk, within a month. So we've got 24 times, we'll, we'll just call it 30, we'll call it 720 hours. Max hours to deliver equals 720. Hours to deliver equals the same 720. Okay, so we now have all of this set up. We're not setting up our origin or a destination just yet, but we can do our volume and our weight and our max payment and our min payment. So we can determine that fairly easily. So our volume equals random.range, and this is going to be in floats, so business.shippingcontainer volume minimum, and business.shippingcontainer, business.shippingcontainer volume maximum. 
and then our weight would be equal to random dot range and this would be between business dot shipping container weight minimum and business dot shipping container weight maximum there we go so our volume and our weight are now determined and with that being the case i'm going to do this down here so we don't have to do this every every time we'll we'll expand this beyond just the shipping container chance in just a moment but first let's calculate our max and our min payment so max payment equals this is going to be our volume times business dot money per cubic meter I'm going to go ahead and put these in parentheses plus weight times business dot money per kilogram so that's our max payment min payment equals business actually equals max payment times business dot min payment multiplier which doesn't exist yet so let's hop over to business and we will create up here public float min payment multiplier multiplier equals and for right now I'm going to say you get a quarter of your payment and I think I spelled this wrong yes I did that needs to be an I not a Y so min payment multiplier if you miss your window you only get a quarter of your payment and it ticks down every single hour so that should be exciting stuff. So we now have everything here being assigned except for our volume and weight and our delivery type if we're not a shipping container and our origin and destination. And actually, we do need a third variable here. Public float distance in kilometers. That's the third variable here. We need to know how far this is via probably this. But for right now, we'll pop over to our business and we will say public float money per, and this will be money per kilometer equals, and we'll just leave that at the same $2 per kilometer. That'll be fine. I mean, that's actually really high. That's really, really, really high. We'll say it's one cent per kilometer. <laughs> okay. We can always adjust that later as well. So our distance would then be... Let's see, we have distance 2 is via a game object. Yeah, that's probably not going to be the way we want to do that. We're probably going to want to calculate that a little bit differently. For right now, I'm going to put in to do. Calculate payment for distance. And we're just going to put that right up here. Okay, there we go. And now we will finish off doing our delivery type. We'll need to do that when we do our origin. And origin destination. There we go. So I'm just going to put that in as a to-do for right now, and we're just going to move on and get our other chances and generate our volume and weights. So else if roll is less than business.shipping container chance plus business. Dot, the next one is crate chance, then type equals delivery type dot crate. And then volume equals random dot range business dot crate volume min and business busyness dot crate volume max. There we go. And weight equals random dot range business dot crate weight min and business business dot crate weight max there we go else if roll is less than business dot shipping container chance 
plus business dot create chance plus business dot package chance which barely fits on this screen <laughs> type equals delivery type dot package volume equals random dot range business dot package uh, this needs to be package volume min and business dot package volume max and then weight equals random not ransom I mean we are kind of holding these packages ransom sometimes but random dot range business dot package weight min and business nope that's not how anything is spelled bit no still there we go business dot package weight max oh my that's getting exciting. There we go. And then finally, we can just say else type equals delivery type dot, and this will be a parcel. Volume equals random, nope, still not ransom, random dot range, business dot parcel, volume min, business dot parcel, volume max. And then weight equals random dot range business dot parcel weight min and business dot parcel weight max. Okay. So we still need to calculate our payment for distance and origin and destination. So realistically, the list of subhexes here. What is the count of this list? 73. And it should be the same for sub sub hexes. So we can calculate our origin and destination sub sub hexes pretty easily by saying sub sub destination equals. And the question then becomes if I make this be purely random, We'll be delivering to just cow pastures. Is that fine? I mean, we don't keep around our buildings. If I don't want to do that, we would need to keep a reference here rather than regenerating it. That would be a pretty substantial rework of the architecture here, but that might be necessary. Because I was also thinking about having a way to show the buildings when we're zoomed out. It would definitely require a substantial rewrite of how that all works. For right now, I'm just going to completely randomize it. If it becomes a problem, we can change it later. So sub sub destination equals random dot range. And this is going to be an integer. So it can go between zero inclusive and 73 exclusive. Because this is a list that is exactly 73 wrong wrong 73 long, but it is zero indexed. So the top or the highest number in the list is number 72. So that's fine. And then our sub destination is the same thing actually, random dot range, zero and 73, like so. And then our sub sub origin, which we maybe wanna calculate first just for, you know, just for thematic appropriateness, I guess, is what I'm going for. So that'll be random.range 0, 073. And then sub origin equals random.range 0, 073. So this will generate origins and de deliveries to forests and farmland and all that fun stuff. 
maybe consider the building type in that location first. For right now, we'll just leave that comment there. That's a potential optimization we can make later. So now we need to determine our actual hex, our, our world hex. So let's go ahead and just say origin, which is actually a base hex that we need to assign. So origin equals, and then the question is, should we just code a random hex choose option into our hex manager? And I kind of feel like we should. So let's go into our hex manager here and create a function here after create urban public base hex get random hex and we don't need anything other than that so then um, int i equals random dot range and this would be zero and map dot count this map dot count and then int j equals random dot range between zero and map i dot count and then return and this would return map i j and that just gets a random hex so origin would then be equal to hex manager dot get random hex. No, not get component, get random hex. Did I make that a private? No, nope, that's a public. Okay, we're good. So get random hex and then destination equals hex manager dot get random hex. Yeah. That'll be fine. I mean, the, the the thing is that I was just thinking of is that the destination might be equal to the origin. So if destination equals origin, and actually we might want to say while destination equals origin, we just re-roll the destination until destination no longer equals origin. There we go. So we now know our destination. And then all we need to know is our distance between them, right? So do we care about the subhex and the sub subhex? I mean, what kind of a scale are we talking about here? I'm kind of thinking as far as this scale goes, I'm leaning towards subhexes being roughly on the kilometer level. Which would mean 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Which would mean that they're about 9 kilometers across. Maybe round that up to 10. And then just don't care about getting it any more precise than that. Or have it be kind of randomly generated beyond there. Yeah, that could work. So at that point, then our distance would be equal to, and this would be origin minus destination dot square magnitude. Um, oh, right. Origin dot transform, transform dot position minus destination dot transform dot position dot square magnitude, we'll multiply that by 10, so it's 10 kilometers each, and then we'll just add a randomly generated fudge. Fudge is randomly generated right now. Maybe make this affected by the sub, sub, sub positions when we know more about the internal structure of the base hex. There we go. And this is going to be times right now by random dot range. Actually, we're gonna to add to it. 
random.range 0f, actually negative 9f and 9f. Okay. So that's going to be calculated that way right now. I'm not super happy with it, but that's just the way it's going to be for now. Fudge is randomly generated. We'll consider doing it elsewhere when we know more about the internal structure of the hex. Because right now, the hex doesn't actually know what's inside of it. And that's potentially an issue. We're going to have to rework the inside of the hex though, but it is time to put a cut in. Maybe reworking the inside of the hex so that we know this information is something for next episode. Well, we'll get started on it anyway. See you all then.